Hey everybody, this is Ditto from Reef to Reef. I'm gonna go through a quick walkthrough of a Profilux GHL 4E, B as in Central's controller. This 4E controller is gonna be used for a brand new frag tank build that I'm gonna be utilizing on a water box all in one tank. That frag tank is gonna be uh, supported by both my 180 gallon and 100 gallon uh, reef tanks that I currently have running in my house. I'm just getting into fragging so I needed a controller on my frag tank that I could grow with because I don't know where it was going. So I wanted a controller that A, I could grow with. It also required to have one through 10 volt ports. And the reason why it needed one through 10 volt ports is, is that I'm gonna be utilizing existing equipment in my house that I already have, tons, uh, tons power heads, and I also have Kessel lights. I wanted the ability to control those through the one through 10 volt ports. I also needed some additional things that I didn't want to have to add additional modules to do with competitor products. Number one was leak, leak detection. I, in case the tank leaks, I want to know. Also, I want to be able to shut things down. I want to be able to install float sensors because this is going to have automatic water changes on it. And I also, again, needed to make sure that I can control my tons pumps. I'm very big into tons. I love tons pumps and I love that they can be controlled through a one through 10 volt port. So with that, with those types of requirements, it was an obvious choice that I was gonna go with a Proflux 4E controller. I could have gone out there and bought the Proflux 4 or I could have bought a competitor's product, but again, I didn't need some of the features that come with the full blown versions of the controllers. I wanted to start small like I stated and grow into it. And this is a great value for what you get comes with a lot of features built into it and it allows you to grow it as you see fit as you're growing your fish tank. So with that said, what do you get with the 4E controller? You get the power adapter, you get a heavy duty power plug, and this is a big difference between Proflux 4s and competitor types of products. Some competitor type products out there require a power bar to operate the actual controller. GHL controllers actually get their power from the actual 12 volt adapter that comes with the unit. They also provide you with the null plug. The null plug is used for calibration of an ORP sensor that you would plug into the unit. That is the first step that you do when you're calibrating the ORP uh, probe is you have to zero it out or null. This was a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting this, but I'm like, oh cool, I didn't have to purchase one, is the digital temperature probe. And this is another big difference with the GHL product line is they use digital temperature sensor probes when competitors out there use analog. So that's a digital temperature sensor probe. They also give you the USB control cable. The USB control cable is used for the desktop application, the Windows GCC desktop application. Again, some misconception out there is, is that you need to use the Windows GCC desktop application to configure the unit. I'm gonna to toss this to the side right now, and I'm gonna show you in my next video, me configuring the GHL Proflux 4E controller, not using the desktop application. You can use your iPhone, your Google Android, your iPad, and you can configure the Proflux 4 and 4E controller from that device. And I'm gonna show you in the next video how to do that. So with that said, what is the 4E controller? Here is a 4E controller. Looks very similar to the Proflux 4. It is the same size as the Proflux 4. As you can see, it is not a weird shape. It can be easily put on shelves. It can be easily mounted this way. I've seen them now upside down. People uh, mounted them pretty uniquely, but it's a very nice shape. Again, it's the same shape as their doser. It's the same shape as their expansion box, so you can easily stack them if you wish to uh, without any issues. What comes with the 4E controller is you get the Wi-Fi indicator, you get the alarm indicator. This will blink red in the event that the box is alarming. You do not have to purchase um, an additional accessory. You get the actual display, the control display. This control display is a three line display. This is the control buttons for that display. This is the confirmation button and cancel button. 
So again, you can configure the unit from the display and you have that option and you did not need to go out there and purchase another display or another add-on module to do that. The other big thing with GHL's product line is this right here. And this is the logo indicator. The logo indicator has LEDs underneath it and those LEDs will turn different colors to tell you what's going on with your fish tank. So for an example, it will start blinking red if it's an alarm. So you don't need to go out there and try to rig something to your controller, GHL, out of the box, both in their ProFlux 4 controller, their 4E, and even with their dosers, have visual indicators that, br light, that brightly light up in the event that there's something going on with the controller. So some of those visual indicators are red for an alarm, it'll blink red, blue if everything is okay, green if your dosers are dosing, yellow if your containers are running low on fluids. So it's a great visual indicator and again, you didn't have to go out there and purchase something else. It comes with the unit to begin with. On the back of the unit, you start, you come with two sensor ports, a temperature sensor and a pH redox, which is great for me because this is what I needed to start with on my frag tank. It comes with the 12 volt adapter. This is where you would plug in the 12 volt DC adapter. It comes with the auxiliary uh, port. The auxiliary port is used for four digital or analog input ports. This is the DCF port. The DCF port is where they have announced that their new automatic feeder that's coming soon is going to be plugged into. The CC port, CCP port, is going to be used for the GHL control pad that's coming. This is the USB connection. As I stated before, the USB connection is used for you to connect your laptop, your PC, and utilizing the GCC desktop application. I am an old techie. I love having that capability and I hope GHL continues to support the legacy application. I feel the ability to get back into the, your unit in the event that the Wi-Fi goes down or maybe the web interface fails on your box provides another level of redundancy that other controllers just don't do. So I hope GHL never gets rid of it and we continue to see that feature. Line monitor, I like to call this the power failover mode. What the line monitor uh, does is you plug in a line monitor adapter into that port, you plug it into a wall outlet, and you plug your 12 volt adapter into your UPS. In the event that the line monitor adapter senses that there's no power, what it will do is the box can reconfigure the ports to do different things. So for an example, you could reduce power to your power heads. You can turn off outlets or turn on certain outlets. And the idea is to reduce your power consumption so that your UPS that's currently running your tank can run longer. This might be a little bit hard to see right here. Right here is a digital light control interface. This is used for the Mitris light bars or the Mitris slimline lights, or it's also an RS-232 port. What you don't see here is, and this would be on a 4 controller, is for a ProFlux 4 controller, you would have received, gotten another pH redox port, a salinity port, and they would be right here. Also, you would have seen two red ports here, and those would be S ports. And I can show that by actually showing you the back from their website of a 4 controller itself. And as you can see here, here is the two additional sensor ports and those are, those are the two S ports that I was talking about. So going back to the ProFlux 4E controller, you then have your 1 through 10 volt ports and you get six of them. Six devices, three ports, L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5, and L6. This is where the one through 10 volt port connections go. What I'm gonna be utilizing on my tank is two tons power heads to do um, flow within the actual tank. And I'm gonna be using L3 and L4 to control my Kessel lights. So again, very important for me because I'm gonna be using these ports to actually control things on my tank. I'm also gonna be utilizing these ports. And these are ports are used for flow if you want to install flow monitors, again, I didn't have to purchase another module and plug it in. It's automatic with automatically a feature of the system. You can plug into two sensors into either one of these ports. You put a Y adapter cable and it pretty much expands this to full, 
four ports. So this is where you also can plug in if you want to use float uh, floats, float sensors or optical sensors. GHL offers float and optical sensors. This is where they plug into, but it also is utilized for leak sensors. So I'm going to be utilizing both of these ports. I'm going to be putting in two float sensors, which is going to be used for my automatic water change, changing doser. And I'm going to be using this one down here primarily for my leak detector for my new uh, frag tank. These are PAB connections and you get two of them. Again, the PAB connection is used to connect GHL devices together. It uses a standard ethernet cable. Doesn't mean that you can plug it into your network, but the good news is you can go buy that ethernet cable anywhere. So you can go to your local store, they come in every color, size, and shape. So it gives you enhanced capabilities at a cheaper price because you don't have to you know, order a special cable. You can just use a standard ethernet cable that you buy off the shelf. It also comes with two expansion slots. Very important to me because again, I wanted my controller to grow with me. With that, if I later on want to add salinity monitoring to my to my frag tank is I can actually install a salinity module inside of this box. You just unscrew the four screws on the bottom, pop off the top cover, and you can actually add add-on modules. Or if later on I do want to monitor ORP, I can put an ORP pH card in here and do that also. If I have someday want to put a calcium reactor off of my frag tank or anything else, I have the ability to install those modules inside of the unit without putting another external module on it, screwing it to my stand, running a cable. It makes it a much cleaner looking interface. So that's really what you get with the GHL 4E controller. The reason why I went with GHL is, as you guys know, or maybe not, on the Reef to Reef forums, there's a large thread out there about switching controllers. I used to use a competitor's product on all of my tanks, and I ran into some issues with a competitor's product where stability and reliability was essential for me. So doing my research, I came across GHL both on Reef to Reef, and on another forum, I started doing my homework. One of the things that drew me to the GHL product line was the stability and reliability of the platform. I'm seeing that it's being used by major commercial applications, it was being made, used by major businesses, which gave me good feelings inside because it makes me believe, and it's been proven, I've been using them now for 18 months on my tanks, is that the reliability and stability of the product is second to none. And I've, I've seen it, I've witnessed it myself, and now 18 months later, I would never go back to using a competitor's product. So, and that's one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why I went with GHL, which was the stability and reliability. The other big reason why I love GHL now is I don't have a lot of add-on modules. I don't have five other modules, you know, plugged in on the outside of my tank that are used to control things and I have to cable them back to the controller. So it gives a very nice sleek look and feel to the tank. So those are some of the reasons why, you know, I went with the GHL product line. Again, both of my tanks, my other two tanks are running GHL. It's been very, very successful. It's a great controller. Pretty much you set it and you forget it. And that's one of the things that I do love about the GHL. Once you set it, you can forget about using the controller. You'll never touch the front interface. You'll be doing everything using the phone app or the actual web interface. That completes the first video or part one for the Proflux 4E. And my next video, part two, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Proflux 4E just using your iPhone. Again, this is Ditto from Reef to Reef. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below, or you can also find me on Reef to Reef. Again, this is Ditto signing off.